This is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Kira Litomaki. Yes. Is that close enough? Am that I in the ballpark? Perfect. Okay. Yes. Um, who is an animation supervisor on Zootopia and a uh, former UW graduate. Yes, uh, that's right. Go dogs. Uh, you were there at the same time I was, 2000. Really? to 2004 or 2005 ish. Yeah. Um, so I figured we'd start by singing, you know, the fight song about Anne <laughs> Washington. Um, no, but in all seriousness, uh, I kind of wanted to start by talking about your journey um, in the context of like being a fan of animation as a child to actually getting to be a animator. What was that process like and what was it sort of, because animation has evolved in our lifetime dramatically compared to probably, you know, the 40 years before that. So what is it like in terms of loving the art, being interested in being it, and sort of having to evolve with that as it grew itself? Yeah, that was a huge challenge for me, actually, because the moment that I saw Sleeping Beauty as a child, I, and I think I had seen some behind-the-scenes TV special, because I'm not sure how I knew it was a job, because at the same time, these things were very real to me. Uh, but I knew I wanted to be an animator, and I was like, three or four years old saying this. And I have a kindergarten paper that says I wanted to be a drawer for Disney. And so I was totally in love with all the hand-drawn films. I drew all the time, went to Disney World, went on the animation tour, if you've ever been there. And they used to have like the video with Robin Williams that explained the whole animation oh. process. I loved it. And then when I was looking to go to colleges, um, CG animation had really taken over Blown the up. industry. Yeah, I mean, Toy Story was at 95, so it was like a few years before. Yeah, well, school. this was this was about, you know, kind of around Monsters, Inc. time. Oh, yes. And I come from a very kind of scientific family. <laughs> my mom is a chemist. My dad is an electrical engineer. And so the idea of me being an artist was just a very foreign idea. Uh -huh. And, you know, we had you know, kind of looked at art schools and things. But, you know, I think there was an underlying fear of, will I have a job when I get done? <laughs> sure. And um, I got a lot of advice. I actually, my dad worked with somebody who had a nephew who worked at Disney at the time. And his name was Nathan Warner. And so I emailed him like many high school students <laughs> do, you know, when they are looking for, to connect with somebody in the industry. And he gave me the advice to really go, you know, go get a well-rounded education continue to draw, but also learn how to use the computer. And I took that advice really to heart, and I went very technical, and I did a computer science major at oh, yes. UW. But all the while, I was able to take art classes on the side and continue sort of my drawing and things like that. And um, at the end of the computer science uh, curriculum, there was an animation capstone, and it was a course where they let you kind of learn Maya, which is the program yeah, that we yeah. use, and kind of do each part of the pipeline. And then it takes kids from all different disciplines across the university, and you get together and you make a film. And that was such a great thing to do, and it really kind of taught me what it was like to work on a real production. I, I think that was the best thing to get me ready for what, what it is really like to work at the studios now. And then, um, and it confirmed for me also that animation was indeed what I wanted to do. But of course, you know, I graduated and like many people when they graduate, you're not quite ready to go get that dream job sure, right sure. out of school. And right about that time, animationmentor.com came around. And this was an online school, which was very early on yeah, in the, the online time, schools. Very, uh, yeah. And, and for me to tell my parents that I had just graduated from a, a wonderful university and now I wanted to go to school like online. Like going to the University of Phoenix or something basically. <laughs> it, was, it was a little like, are you, what, what is this? Yeah. You know, they were a little wary about it, but it, it had, they had mentors, it's called Animation Mentor, and they had mentors who were animators working at all the major studios. That's cool. And they would mentor you online. So you would do assignments and you would send it to them and they would critique it, give you a video critique, and then you would have a live class over webcams. That's pretty amazing. Once a week. And that was really the spot where I started to really learn and get better at animating. And my um, demo reel, my student work from Animation Mentor, I sent it out, um, you know, to to Disney, and I actually got a call back to be a trainee. So that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, 
do your short side question do your parents feel not not in terms of the artistic side but it's a much more sort of complicated scientific thing in terms of 3D animation, you know, with light sources, all sorts of things like that, shadowing, etc. Does it feel a little bit more in their wheelhouse now that it's all like 3D <laughs> based mostly in terms of animation? You know what? I don't think so. My parents were always insanely supportive. Um, That's great. And it, and it was never, they always supported me in pursuing my dream. And it was never like, oh, well, you should do this science stuff on the side. It was really just, you know, me trying to evolve with the industry and really be prepared. I even was a French major. I didn't actually get my major in French, but I was a French major because Disney, for a while, had a studio in Paris. And all their other... That's a sweet gig. All of their other... (laughs) studios were in English speaking areas. So I figured I was okay to work there. But what if I needed to get a job at Paris? I needed to be able to speak French. So everything in my life I geared towards trying to be able to work at Disney. So (laughs) did you, uh, are you fluent in French now? I'm not fluent. I was a lot better (laughs) 10 years ago, but I can understand it. Not too bad. And we have some French animators. And so I practice a little bit with them and they laugh at me. And (laughs) that's pretty awesome. Uh, in terms of this production, I mean, you've worked on a whole bunch of things as well. Wreck-It Ralph, Frozen, uh, Paper Man, which I'm a big fan of. Yeah. Um, as an animation supervisor, uh, on a film that probably takes, what, three years, four years to complete, what is that like in terms of a practical, um, logistical sort of perspective? I mean, I guess some people have more loose... Uh, jobs. I mean, regular films are not necessarily filmed chronologically or whatever, but you specifically were responsible for the main character or sort of maintaining continuity of that character and a few other scenes and stuff like that. So it's very sort of outside of the general sort of, you know, understanding of a job of like, I start at A, I finish at B, like that is it. So what is it like working in a non-linear environment (laughs) where you're not working on everything in the project, just a small segment of it over the course of several years? Is that challenging? Is it fun challenging? What is that like? It's all of the above. (laughs) Um, Yeah, it is like you, like I am responsible for one little piece of this puzzle and it's this moving puzzle that is being, you know, finished at all different points along the way. But, you know, really we are all sort of subject to whatever the story is. And when I rolled on the picture, Judy Hopps was not the main character of the film. It was Nick Wilde. The fox was the main character. Which is funny how that just changes the entire dynamic of the story. And in fact, Judy's character was not at all like what she was, what she's like now. And uh, she was more of a cynical, been there, done that, seen it all cop, really seasoned cop. (laughs) And um, and when Jennifer was cast in the role, Jennifer brings such a sweet, her vocal quality is so pure and, and nice and optimistic. And she really like helped Judy become this kind of glass half full kind of bunny. And that really started to shape the story and turn the story in a different direction. It's, it's kind of fascinating and interesting to think about. I mean, in terms of like most animated films, they're sort of made for general audiences. And while it would fascinate me what like a sarcastic, like jaded bunny cop would be like, I kind of, I mean, it seems to work better to have her be like this, optimistic that anyone can do anything sort of personality. Totally, totally. And she makes a great foil to Nick because Nick is really that cynic in the film. And so to have her be the opposite of that really makes them a good pairing. I mean, you make, you bring up another interesting question in terms of like recording the audio and the vocal casting and all that sort of stuff in terms of this. I am, as I believe that usually occurs fairly late in the project just because so many things change and stuff like that. Um, what is it, what is, what is it like as these other variables come into play when you're like, oh, we're working on this bunny and now it's Jennifer Goodwin. And it's sort of like, how much does that change your perspective as you're working on this project? Um, I love it as soon as the voice actor is cast because that suddenly gives me a whole nother thing to study. Um, you know, animators were all about observation. And so, you know, for Zootopia, we had a plethora of it, of not just looking at bunny rabbits all day long and studying their movements and stuff. And then, you know, the directors will have, you know, they will describe the character, oh, she's like this or she's like this. But the moment that that character gets a voice, 
then it's like everything kind of starts to come together. And then I can look at Jennifer when she's recording her lines and use that as reference. So, and one of the things that I noticed with her is whenever she's recording her lines, she, she gestures a lot. She usually has a pencil in her hand and she's kind of, I almost describe it as conducting the lines, sure. but there's a very bouncy quality to That's it. Awesome. And since she's a rabbit in the movie, it seemed like that attribute worked really well. And so that was something that we tried to incorporate well, into her character. I would, I would imagine that, you know, the way different people emphasize different words and the speed at which they speak and all that sort of stuff totally. would dramatic, not dramatic, well, maybe dramatically, but would affect the way you sort of approach a character and how it's anime or something like that. As yeah. you said, like if she's really upbeat and positive, you're not going to make this like a grumbly little depressed rabbit. So is that, is that difficult when you sort of like, I mean, it sort of sets the tone, but then you sort of have to reinterpret your work and say like, okay, that worked before. Now we're going to have to change this. Well, I will say um, they're cast fairly early on. I mean, I rolled onto the picture before she was cast, but we weren't in production on animation since I got to be a supervisor this time around. I got to come on during the, the time that we were really building her character and deciding, you know, I was working with the character designer and the the guy that sculpts her inside the computer. And we were adjusting kind of the way she looks and trying to make her ready to be animated. So um, Jennifer came on at a really good spot uh, before, awesome. you know, like when we were just starting to experiment with how she was going to move. Um, that's very cool. Um, <laughs> I guess I need to wrap it up here. Um, sure. So Zootopia comes out March 4th. Yes, it does. Um, congratulations on that. Thank uh, you. Is there anything next that people can sort of stay tuned that you're working on that you might want to let people know about? Or is there any place people, you know, social media or something, <laughs> website, wherever, that I people can stay tuned? I am a phantom, stay <laughs> on, phantom? The, on right. the internet. I am not on any social media. Okay. But I... If they want to see your upcoming work, <laughs> what might they But my to? next project, I'm working on Moana, and that's going to be out this November, I believe. Wow. And uh, I'm very excited about it because it's being directed by Ron Clements and John Musker. And you may know them as the directors of The Little Mermaid and Aladdin. So, Some again, pretty, another pretty childhood major, dream yeah. coming true. Check it off the bucket list. So that's I, pretty awesome. Yeah, I can't. I don't have any complaints. <laughs> well, congratulations, Utopia. Can't wait to see uh, Thank that you. in, uh, what, November, you said? Huh? Yes, November. Okay, and... Uh, I can't wait to see what occurs after that. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you.